Um, well, cool. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, back to the Spotlight Theater. Uh, yesterday during the keynote, uh, you heard about the four uh, honorees of this year's Elastic Cause Awards. Um, we wanted to give you a little bit more about what they're doing, uh, not just from an Elastic perspective, because that's really, we're just a small part of it. Uh, we want you to know about their causes, what they're doing, and then perhaps afterwards talk about how our uh, technology community can get involved. So you heard Leah yesterday introduce uh, Farid from Damagi and about how uh, they're helping to fight uh, and help uh, folks who are afflicted with uh, tuberculosis across India. Uh, so Farid's going to take you through it. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, there should be a five minute break where you can ask questions out, uh, outside. Uh, and then we'll quickly go through and uh, do our next one. So everybody, Farid. Yeah, so I'm Fareed, uh, I'm a senior engineer at Imagi, uh, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the projects we've been running over the last couple of years that use Elasticsearch, um, but also that, uh, that we have using our, our uh, software platform called Comcare, uh, that I'll describe to you in a little bit. Uh, so, first a little bit about our company. Um, we were founded in 2002 out of MIT and Harvard Medical School. Uh, we have offices um, all across the world. Uh, our headquarters are in Boston. We have offices in Delhi, in Cape Town, in Dakar, and, uh, and a small office in DC. We have 135-ish staff across the world, um, and we've run over 500 projects from like child and uh, maternal health programs to this TV pro project that, uh, that I'll be describing in a little bit more detail. Um, and we've run these projects in over 60 countries, and we believe that uh, we have the most uh, digital experience of any firm working in the development sector. So our mission is really to create sustainable impact for underserved populations through these technology solutions for frontline workforces. Uh, one of these workers, uh, frontline workers, is Manish, uh, and he's a tuberculosis health visitor in Mumbai in India. He's one of almost 50,000 health visitors um, that are working uh, on this problem of TB. And his main role is to follow people around and ensure that they take their drugs as part of the uh, World Health Organization's um, directly observed treatment protocol. And what that protocol is, is basically everyone who has TB uh, has to be monitored daily uh, for them to make sure that they're taking their drugs. His work is uh, extremely important. Uh, Almost 23% of the world's TB cases happen in India, which means that there's 1.6 million people who are diagnosed every year with TB in India alone. 300,000 of those die every year, uh, which uh, equates to about two every three minutes. So over the course of this presentation, uh, something like six people will have died from TB. So I'll try and keep it short. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> uh, the upshot of this is uh, that TB is actually curable. Uh, you can cure it with a six-month course of, uh, of uh, oral antibiotics, um, but this, this has to be done every day. Um, if you don't, it often trans, uh, transitions into this antibiotic-resistant form of TB, uh, which requires a two-year course of injectable antibiotics. Um, and these antibiotics are super strong, and the side effects of those often actually lead to death instead of uh, dying from TB cells. Uh, once you get this uh, antibiotic-resistant form, it's, it's not, not a good thing. So the WHO came up with this directly observed treatment protocol uh, where people like Manish are following patients around, um, making sure that they take their drugs and, and don't miss their, their courses. So he's really at the front line of this battle against TB. Uh, but his, uh, his work is not made any easier by the processes that he has to take. So he has to track every dose that his patients take in triplicate on treatment cards that look like this. So he fills out three of these every time someone comes in to take their drugs every day. Uh, he follows hundreds of people. Um, so he has hundreds of these stacks of paper uh, sitting in his office. And the only way that he knows if someone is defaulting on their course of drugs is to flip through his paper and be like, oh, you didn't take it on February 22nd. Like, what happened there? So it's really a lot of work for him to, to keep up to date on this, on this stuff. He also keeps track of lab requests. So when a suspected case of TB comes into his, into his office, uh, he's the one who writes out the lab requisition and makes sure that people actually go to the labs. Uh, he keeps track of stock in his... Um, in his clinic, 
So he has to make sure that he has enough uh, patient boxes. Of, um, so and all of this stuff happens on paper. Uh, he's not the only one. There's uh, this huge hierarchy of healthcare workers uh, in, in, in India. Uh, this is only a subset of it, actually. Uh, we worked with the, with the government to, to have different users on, in our platform that I'll describe. Um, and our user model was like the most insane thing. Um, so all of these people kind of create data about the patients. Um, they all act on the data, uh, but all of it is collected on paper. So I actually watched uh, this uh, district supervisor who sits a couple of levels above uh, Manish take all of the treatment cards from her district and total up all of the all of the information on there into this book, which she then sent to her supervisor, who then also like added all, all this stuff up um, themselves. Which I don't know about you, but I can't even like divide a grocery bill between friends. So, uh, um, so yeah. Manisha's treatment workflows are also extremely complicated, so not only is he doing all of this stuff on paper, uh, but when a suspected case arrives at his, uh, at his clinic, he has to send out this lab request to keep track of which lab, um, which lab the patient went to. Once he has the lab request back, he then refers the patient out uh, to a doctor. He's not a doctor himself, so he needs a medical officer to sign off on, on the diagnosis. And that's when his daily monitoring of adherence step starts. That's when he keeps track of this patient every day, um, making sure that he's taking his drugs. He might also refer the patient out to an HIV clinic or a diabetes clinic, uh, depending on what type of patient it is. Um, TB predominantly affects uh, people with other, um, with other health issues, um, so like malnourishment or HIV. Um, and so he tracks them, like doing all of these things, like lab follow-ups, uh, follow-up uh, referrals to doctors, uh, right up until treatment is completed. And unfortunately, sometimes this loops back around and uh, you get relapsed TB. So he does this for hundreds of patients, keeps track of all of this stuff uh, on his stack of treatment cards that he carries around with him. So there is some technology, however. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, the government of India mandated that all TB patients be tracked in a government database, uh, which is awesome. Um, and they came up with this. Uh, which is called NICSHE, which is the, uh, the Ministry of Health's um, database for TB patients. Uh, this website was made, I think, in like 2015 or something, even though it looks like it was made in 1999. Um, but all of, uh, all of this is filled out by hand by someone who sits at the district level. So they take this stack of, t of treatment cards and manually type in all of the patient details uh, one by one, uh, which is for me, it's like a crazy, crazy thing. Um, just looking at handwriting is really hard. So you can imagine what this database looks like. Um, there's a lot of duplicate information, um, nail, names misspelled, uh, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, and it can also take weeks for data to get here. So if you're in a remote area, getting these treatment cards out uh, to your district supervisor or your data entry operator takes a long time. So this means it's really hard for the government to keep track of who actually has TB, like where are the hotspots, uh, that kind of thing. So what if instead uh, they could collect all this data, digitize it where it's created in Manisha's hands, um, and have it immediately aggregated and actionable? Um, this is a thing that we thought that mobile technology could solve. So this is what we do at Demagi. Uh, we build this platform that we call Comcare, which is an open source and user programming platform that enables anyone to design and launch their own mobile apps. It's the most widely used evidence-based mobile platform in use by frontline, in use by frontline workers. So people like Manish, um, they use Comcare. And Comcare allows you to design apps for any purpose, um, be it data collection, simple surveys, case management, counseling apps, um, logistics tracking, much more. So we have this, this app builder that requires no programming experience at all, um, this app builder and form builder. And users of our app builder are mostly uh, program managers in, uh, in public, health, um, public health environments. So I like to tell my friends that I build tools for other people to build tools for other people, um, which probably a lot of you guys are doing too. <laughs> um, one of the really cool things about Comcare that I love is that all of the apps are offline first. So this means that uh, our apps work from anywhere from the biggest cities like Mumbai all the way down to super remote villages. Uh, so these people are doing data collection on Comcare and they're able to go back to somewhere uh, where, there's, where there's cell phone service or Wi-Fi and upload their stuff to the cloud. Um, so this is what we try and do. We try and bring the powerful products and services that we build 
to projects like this TV project um, to be able to amplify the effectiveness of the of the workforce on the ground. So it's really like empowering Manish to be able to do his job better. So over the last two years, uh, we our engineers um, and our global services team, which is what we call our um, our app builders that that go out into the field. We worked on this app uh, for people like Manish and others in that TV hierarchy. So this app allows him to carry out all of the all of the things that he was doing before. So from registration to adherence monitoring to tracking his referrals. So he's able to see at a glance like what this patient, like what's the status of this patient. Um, it keeps track of all of his referrals. So if he refers uh, one of these patients out to a doctor, the doctor will get that immediately on their phone, along with all of the information um, that they need. He's also provided with a bunch of task lists. So. Uh, you know, of his patient population, who hasn't he done the initial home visit, or who hasn't he uh, initiated on treatment yet? So it kind of takes the, all of the guesswork out of, of what he's doing on his paper. Uh, and then we also provide these aggregated reports that happen immediately. So uh, this is really like one of the most powerful parts because all of the data immediately gets gets aggregated. So it goes down from months of aggregating this data into like minutes of like when it shows up. Um, so this allows the government to like act as fast as they can and provide program managers with like more information that they need. So yeah, this removes the, the need for paper for Manish. He just carries around his phone. He's got all of his all of his stuff there. Um, this was our data model diagram that we ended up with. Um, as you guys probably know, it's really hard to take a real world workflow and shove it into this like digital domain, um, especially working on in a country as big as India, it's like every single district has their own way of doing things, and we're you know, trying to fit that into some way, um, into a digital way, um, is hard. So that was one of, the, one of our challenges. But we ran uh, this pilot project over the last two years, so taking all of these paper-based workflows and moving them into the phone uh, over three states. So the states of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Bihar. Uh, so we chose these big sites uh, in Maharashtra, um, the city of Mumbai, and then rural and mid-sized sites. And we tracked over 150,000 patients and suspected cases um, over the last two years. So people like Manish have been using the app and, and doing some data collection. Um, but I, what I really wanted to talk about today is, is one of the big uh, problems that we came up with um, while we were working on this was the issue of patient migration. So patients, they live in their rural village, uh, they get diagnosed with TB, they get start, started following um, by someone like Manish, and then they move to the city. They, they like go find a job or something. Um, so, but their treatment cards are left in their village. <coughs> they don't follow them around. Um, like today, I come to San Francisco. Uh, I'm normally in Boston, so uh, all of my treatment cards are over there in, Bo in Boston. So, what happens to that person's data? Um, this is like a this is a particular challenge for uh, for diseases like to be TB, where daily treatment needs to be tracked and monitor it every day. Um, so this makes it hard for a paper-based app like this. Currently what happens is someone goes out of town, I come to San Francisco, um, and I would go to a clinic and be like, hey, I have TB, give me my daily drugs. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? I don't have drugs for you. So they would call up my clinic in Boston, and my clinic in Boston would go rifle through uh, their paper, take a picture of it, and send it over WhatsApp to the clinic here. Um, which is cool, you're using the tools at your disposal, but it's not really a good way of dealing with health data um, or a sustainable or scalable solution. We also now have like fragmented data. Some of it is here, some of it is there. Um, this also causes duplicate registrations. People are like, oh, you have TB? Okay, let me register you and enter you into this government database. So there's a lot of duplicate registrations that end up happening. So what we really wanted was a way for users to be able to search for patients. Uh, that showed up at their clinic. Um, so I show up in San Francisco, they just type in my name and my ID, and it show up, shows up with, their, uh, uh, with, with the data that, that has been collected about me. I'm guessing you guys can guess what I'm going to do next. <laughs> so we integrated Elasticsearch uh, into Comcare. And I wanted to say, you know, for search. Um, <laughs> so when I show up at Manisha's, uh, at Manisha's clinic now, you can type my name in um, and find the case that is assigned to me. Um, this is all test data. So, um, so we yeah. So we we wanted to build this this case search um, interface uh, into our platform. 
Um, but since we're a platform, we don't build TV apps. We build this ComCare, which is a tool for other people to build apps. Um, so we built this interface uh, for Elasticsearch that allows non-developers to, to create search queries themselves. Um, really simple uh, key value kind of thing where you search for a key and it, and it pulls out uh, the, the data from, uh, from Elasticsearch. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of what the UI is. So we have kind of two classes of users, some who are uh, non-technical and some who are very technical developers. Um, so we allow our non-technical users to define uh, their search, search parameters uh, however they want it. Uh, but it also allows um, developers to dump in their Elasticsearch uh, JSON too, uh, if you want to do something more complicated. Um, the big challenge for us is that Comcare users configure everything. Uh, including their own data models. So every app that you build, uh, you define your schema and your uh, and your data model. But we have hundreds of apps, schemas, and data models that we keep track of. Um, so we have this like big unstructured data set um, that we store in Postgres in uh, JSON format, uh, big JSON blobs of data. Um, so this was hard for us uh, to, to search directly in in Postgres. Uh, so we used, um, that was one of the reasons that we chose Elasticsearch, is it made it really easy for us to just map this data into nested documents where uh, the keys are the case properties um, and the values are the things that are stored against those things. So things like beneficiary IDs isn't something that is general to every app, it's something that was specific to this TV app. And the user enters the value and it, and it performs the search. Building this uh, feature of case search uh, really allowed me to see the power of building into a platform instead of building just one app. Um, so one of the, the cool things about working at Dimagi is all of the features that we build for any of our clients, um, be it like the government, they roll back into our platform. Um, so they're available for all of our users, uh, not only the people who, uh, who started them. Um, so right after we added this functionality into the platform, uh, we re released it internally. Um, and I got an email recently after I announced uh, that we were receiving this calls award from two of our global services members that were working on other projects, one in Cameroon and then one um, in a bunch of countries in Africa, in Southern Africa, um, in Lesotho, Uganda, Swaziland, and South Africa, that they'd also used this case search feature unbeknownst to me, um, which was cool. So in Cameroon, as part of this HIV project that they were working on, uh, they deployed this to over 220 community-based peer educators um, who were identifying and counseling uh, at-risk populations of HIV. And similarly, they had the same problem of mi this migration where HIV patients were migrating elsewhere. In South Africa and Lesotho, Swaziland, and Uganda, uh, this was implemented in, a, in an app that was uh, built for the prevention of transmission of HIV from mothers to children. So there's a bunch of these, what they call mentor mothers, who mentor uh, HIV patients. Um, and they've released this uh, to over 880 users uh, in those four countries. Uh, so this was really cool for me to see like something that we built for one context, um, that we were able to make it like flexible thanks to you know, how, um, how easy it was for us to, to set that up. It was then able to be used in, in a bunch of other contexts, which was super interesting. Um, so, you guys should try it out. Um, Comcare is open source. Uh, you can help us out, help us build it um, at, on GitHub. Uh, but we also have a hosted um, platform at comcarehq.org, and we have a free tier or community plan. Um, and you guys can go there today and build your apps, your data collection apps. Um, it's really easy to click, click around. You can also use all your apps online. We have this uh, web apps feature that we recently released, so um, your apps worth both on Android devices and then on the web too, so whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, try it out. I would love to hear more about your use cases, like what you guys are doing with it. Um, yeah, let me think of the future of it. <laughs> um, but that's all I have for you, so thank you very much. If you guys have questions.